Paldea Evolve is coming out very soon, and I wanted to look at some Japanese lists, but I figured our, everyone's already done a video on BDIF, like what's like Gardevoir super good now, Chin Pao, all the super cool new BDIF archetypes. So I figured it'd be a fun thing to look over some more like spicy rogue off meta picks for the Paldea Evolve meta. So today we're going over 10 decks that I think are much improved after Paldea Evolved. Our first deck is Torterra from Brilliant Stars. And Torterra has a pretty cool attack that it is 50 times the number of evolution Pokemon we have in play. This is always, it's been a um, menace in the Gym Leader Challenge format, but it's always been too slow for standard. But the new Luxury coming out in Paldea Evolved uh, might just be a, a, enough to make it uh, finally consistent enough. With its ability, let's just put it down straight into play if we're behind on prizes. No Shinx, no Luxio, we can just slam down that Luxury. Also, it's a, it's a pretty admirable attacker in the Lugia V-Star matchup as, as well. So, uh, we're going to be always falling behind. We have the, the Grottle, which can help us uh, set up quickly, and then we can just slam down those Luxury. We have the, the Barrel Engine to uh, keep drawing cards. I do fear that this will, will be too slow into uh, Lost Zone Box type matchups, but we do have a very high damage ceiling into uh, multi prize matchups, and Iono is just an all around great comeback card uh, for uh, sing single prize decks or just very slow decks in general. And Reversal Energy makes it so Torterra can attack with just one single energy attachment, and Super Art gives us great Pokemon recovery. So, uh, Lost Zone Box might just be too much to overcome for this deck, but it definitely seems like Torterra might finally be, be, be viable in standard format. Regis was one of the most controversial decks in format when it was actually good before rotation. And after rotation, it, it really died because Ordinary Rod left, Aurora Energy left. So you had no good way or consistent way to uh, load up all your Regis because you need all these different energy costs. It just wasn't practical to play them all. But uh, finally, we can maybe actually be, be viable again because we have Super Rod for an item based recovery card. And Luminous Energy lets us um, actually, uh, it, it is not. It's definitely the Walmart Aurora Energy. It's not It's not even close to what Aurora Energy was, but if it's the only special energy attached, um, it provides any of one type. So it can be, it, it's it's sort of a rainbow energy. So we have to still play basic energies, which feels really bad. It, we had to commit nine spaces to basic energies, including the, the energy searches, which definitely can uh, cut into our consistency a little bit. No scuba net also feels pretty bad. But um, Artisan is a pretty cool card in this deck, just being able to, basically having three stadium nest balls is pretty nice. And then Iono is just, of course, just great in single price decks that are playing super long games. So I don't think Regis is going to live up to the former glory that it uh, used to have pre-rotation, but I definitely think it at least will uh, see some play in tournaments after Paldea evolved. Speaking of another deck that was once very hyped, this is Dark Ray V-Star. And we've seen Dark Ray see a bit of a resurgence because Dark, because Gardevoir is weak to Dark. Um, but now we do have a, the new Squawk ability, V, which um, its ability only works on the first turn of the game. You only can use one per turn, but unless you discard your hand and draw six. So it's just a great uh, card for this deck because we want to get those energies down on, on the very first turn. So we can use uh, Moltres as Dire Flame Wings or Dark Patch. Uh, so definitely a bit of a consistency boost for not the, the quickest or most consistent deck. The uh, Rev of Room engines also are very nice to get energies into this card pile and keep just churning through the deck. Iona also is just, of course, great for all these slower decks that might be falling behind early, but um, have very strong late games. And um, of course, Dark Rise is no exception because uh, it might take you two, two or three turns to finally build up to where you're one-shotting V stars and V maxes. But once you get built up, it's it, it's it's definitely uh, pretty daunting for your opponent. I still don't know how Dark Rise is gonna be able to fare into single prizers, especially if there's single prizers that can just one-shot your Dark Rise V star. But I definitely think Dark Rise is gonna be. Uh, a bit faster now and definitely still a very fun deck to play. Our first new deck is Tinkatoni X and its attack for two colorless energies uh, does 30 damage uh, for each card that we have in our hand. So this just seems like a pretty fun deck because we also have the uh, another Tinkaton Hollow in the set lets you discard your card from your hand and draw three cards. So you can see what we're trying to do here. We're trying to build up our hand to get it very huge and just start smacking for big one shots. And the, the Milotic from Evolving Sky synergizes very well with this deck because it makes so our opponent, uh, our, our opponent cannot use any cards to disrupt our hand. So, or they, they can play I Iona all they want, but uh, it's never going to affect our hand and we can just start uh, chaining those big knockouts with, with the uh, Tinkatani X. So this definitely seems like a very fun deck. I don't know how great you'll be in the single prizes, especially Lost Zone Box that can bully uh, your poor Tinkatinks very early in the game. But I think against like big VMAX decks that, um, they're like, 
I, I think you can gust my load and then disrupt your hand up for that. I think things will get tough, but like if you can build up your hand and your opponent has no way of stopping it, and you're just like one shot, one shot, one shot, this deck definitely seems very fun and very cool. Our fifth deck is Leafy on Spide Ops. And Leafy on Spide Ops, I would say, saw a little bit of hype coming out of Scarlet and Violet, but never really did anything on the competitive scene. And I think it has a few new cards out of Paldea Evolved that will change things. So the first one is the Wilderness of Disaster, that stadium card on the very bottom of your screen that uh, makes all basic Pokemon in play that are not fighting have one more retreat cost. So this is, of course, is very good for Leafy on VMAX's Grass Knot attack. Just giving it uh, one more, uh, just uh, just like one more re retreat cost, one less spite ups that we have to set up is just always very good. And there's also that uh, new spite ups from Paldea Evolved that for two Grass Energy shuffles both active Pokemon back into the deck. And you're probably wondering like, hey, why is this so good? And I have, I think the main match of this will be good in is, what well, if your opponent dumps a ton of energies on a Zacian to take a one-shot knockout on a Leafeon VMAX? And you can use this Spite Ops and then shuffle all the energies back into your opponent's deck, especially if you, if you could combine this with like an I Iona or something to really reduce their hand. Then they are going to have to get all the energies back into the, the discard pile to start taking knockouts again. So not a perfect solution, but I definitely think it could help one of your hardest matchups. And then... Of course, we're, like, every deck's playing Iono now, so uh, just it's just such a great card. One of the best cards Pokemon has printed in a very long time. I definitely would think um, playing more Wilderness of Disaster would be a good idea. With, like just I, I mean, Temple of Sinnoh, of course, is nice into matchups like Lugia, but Wilderness of, of Disaster definitely seems pretty good. And it, I guess I don't know how many basic decks are really popping up now, but um, I think Leafy on VMAX is, is improved. I don't know how viable it actually is, but it definitely uh, feels like it's a much better deck now. Another old deck that I would say is a bit improved is Dialga V-Star. And coming out of Scarlet and Violet, people th really thought um, Maridon EX would make Dialga V-Star um, a lot more c consistent and thus make it a bit more meta viable. But uh, Dialga still struggles with uh, some of those single prize decks that don't necessarily mind um, that um, not, not, don't necessarily mind you taking an extra turn and are still just going to be able to one shot through your Dialgas. Order decks that are super fast have also have given Dialga fits before. But there are a couple new cards I do think are going to help out Dialga, and that is, uh, of course, Squawk Ability EX we've mentioned but, but before. We're playing Battle of the AP Pass, Nest Balls, Ultra Balls, so it'll give us a bit more push into the deck early. And also, o Orthworm has a pretty cool ability that if there's three metal energies attached to it, it gains 100 HP, so it's a 230 HP single prizer. Unfortunately, the attack only does 100 damage, so it's not going to be one-shotting a Cramorant. But I would just say in those single prize matchups, especially in the early game, uh, if you could just go into an, an Orthworm early and having 230 HP on a single prize is pretty daunting for a Lost Zone Box deck. So, and then also, like, imagine being able to like, go like Iono's Star Cronus late in the game, like, take out one of your big, your opponent's biggest threats, and then just, like, you could take out, like, two of their biggest threats and leave them with, like, one or two cards. That just seems pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, like, this also is playing a couple Path of the Peaks, maybe trying to go for like an I Iono Path play late in the game, which with only one Iono definitely seems a bit sus, but um, I think Dialga has some new tools in his kit that might make it more viable after Paldea Evolve. And now into my favorite deck from this video, and that is Firebox. I just think this deck is really cool. It's kind of like a counterbox style deck, which has always been some of my more favorite um, kind of decks to play. And this uh, uses the ch new Chi UEX, which for two Fire Energies uh, lets you uh, it does 100 damage and then lets you uh, select three of your bench Pokemon and attach a fire energy uh, from your deck to e each of them. And then using the new Armor Rouge or the old Armor Rouge from Scarlet and Violet Base, lets you as often as you like during your turn move a fire from one of your bench Pokemon uh, to your active slot. So we have all sorts of fun attackers to capitalize on it. We have Entei, Delphox. I guess we're playing Infernape for like, that 200 damage swing attack. I don't necessarily, I don't think it's the greatest card to play, but um, I think that's a um, Charcadet hiding behind the Squawk ability. Uh, kind of an odd placement for the list, but uh, that's just the way this Japanese player choose, or chose to do it. And they're playing uh, Zamazenta and uh, Raikou as some uh, sort of counterbox uh, tech style attackers to hit specific weaknesses. I definitely think like playing a Drapion could be kind of interesting because I, I don't know how great your Mew matchup is. Um, I, I see I saw some list playing uh, Galarian Zapdos to hit, um, of, of course, Arceus and um, just other colors weak Pokemon. And then you have Sky Seal Stone to kind of cash in and. Uh, get uh, big swing turns with these uh, attack attackers. And like the rest of the list is a pretty straight consistency with all, all the ball search cards, trekking shoes. Um, so I have, and like even Charm of Courage is basically a reprint of Cape of Toughness. So I think there's a lot to like with this deck. I just, I think it's really cool. And, it, and as long as it's consistent enough, which I don't know exactly how consistent it is, but if it's consistent enough, I don't think it's this, this deck being a strong medic contender. 
Move have always tried several different ways to get Reggie Drago V Star to work, but for one reason or another, it just hasn't been uh, tournament viable. But I think that's changed with Fortress EX, which when anytime when it's in play, you can just knock it out and you can search your deck for um, up to five grass energies and attaching to your Pokemon any way you like. So this is a much more easy and efficient way to uh, set up your Reggie Drago V Star. And of course, Reggie Drago's Apex Dragon can copy any dragon uh, attack from the discard pile. So, and, and we do pick up Noivern EX, which for two colorless energies does 70 damage and a basic Pokemon. Pokemon uh, cannot damage it, so this is great against a uh, Lost Zone box decks. And then its second attack does, I think, 120 damage, and then uh, your opponent cannot play any special energies or stadium cards. So me VMAX decks are just going to be completely screwed if they're just playing exclusively double turbo energies. I don't know what that Psychic Pokemon is behind the Bidoof. I originally thought it was a Safeguard Mimikyu, but uh, the Mimikyu does have a Psychic in the attack cost. I don't know what that is, so if you know what it is, let me know in the comments. Um, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's hard to tell with some of these Japanese pictures. Um, uh, for, like for Iono is just honestly awesome in this deck too, because we're always going to be uh, putting ourselves behind on prizes to pop that fortress. So, um, like I imagine on turn two, Ioning your opponent down to, to four. That that seems pretty cool to me, like almost rem reminiscent of like uh, turn two Marnie Path. So I think Reggie Drago has a lot going for it now. Like you still have uh, Gudra, Giratina, Duraludon, that were just uh, awesome attackers before, but you pick up another nice attacker in Noivern and finally have some reliable energy acceleration with Fortress EX. But I think this will be finally the, the, the time where, RC, where Reggie Drago V-Star will, will be tournament viable. Our second to last deck is this uh, different approach on Gudra V-Star. No RCs are lost soon to be seen here. We're just using the Tatsugiri from Scarlet and Violet. That lets us uh, search our deck for two basic water energies and attach them to one of our bench Pokemon. We have the new Oracorio to uh, heal 20 damage from our active Pokemon, and we have Lucky Ice Pop Crystal Cave, the Oracorio, so we have so much healing in, in this deck. Luminous Energy removes the headache of having the wrong energies, like his lets us be pretty cheeky with our metal energy count. Um, and then we have uh, Courses Experiment and Iscan, so we can just build up that hand. We don't have to discard any cards. We have some uh, like several cards that are pretty painless to loss in with that uh, Courses Experiment. So I think into any deck that can uh, one-shot you, this deck is going to be in for a pretty bad time. Like if a Gardevoir player can just load up a, a station for a big one-shot, you're probably not going to win that game. But against decks where they're not going to be one-shotting you, I think you're going to have a pretty strong matchup into those decks. So as an average Gudra player, I'm going to have to try this one out. And now probably the cheesiest deck of them all, it's this Wizcash Mill deck. And we've seen crazy Mill decks before. But this one's very cool in that it can go aggro if it needs to. So we mill decks in the past that like we, they, they have used a similar concept to this, like there's that send a scorch mill deck that sat behind the DNC where they used the blast switch from Pokemon Go, then the Charizard from Pokemon Go to mill like 40 cards in a single turn. But if your opponent just um, sort of sat there and and did nothing or like had ways to spread to the bench, uh, you were in for a pretty rough time. But uh, now like this deck. If, if our opponent just wants to sit there and draw a pass and just not be aggressive, have only one Pokemon in play, we can just load up a big Asuian Arcanine V and just one-shot that guy. And if they're going to be super aggressive, we just dump all our energies onto a Arcanine with Dancy stuck in the active spot, a Thornton it into a Barboach and into a Whizcash, and we can mill up to, up to 21 cards with this deck. So I just feel like this deck has a lot of different ways you can play it. We even ha have that Lux, right, to one-shot the UV stars. So this deck just seems really fun. It's gonna definitely be one of the first ones that I try out just because it's just so silly. Like it has the defensive win condition with the deck out. It has the offensive win condition with the Hisuian Arcanine. So there's a lot going on, but I just really like deck like this. It's like super cheesy, but it looks super fun. So uh, what do you guys think of the decks in this video? Are there any ones that you're gonna try or did I miss any other uh, spicy uh, rogue Japanese list? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this kind of content, uh, Please consider subscribing and liking this video. Paldea Evolve is definitely a game changer for the Pokemon TCG, and if you want to hear how it's taken the game back to 2005, I got just the video for you.